Hello there, welcome to GFN Gaming. I'm Russ, and in today's video, I'm gonna be painting up a high elf archer because I have about a million of the I'm not exactly a painting whiz, but I wanted to try a hobby video, so hopefully you can take something from it. Here's the mini's journey from classic plastic to slap job underpainting and finished. I'm gonna be painting this guy without an airbrush, and I'm gonna be starting with a black primer. I did apply this with an airbrush, but it would work using a brush or a rattle can. As mentioned before, I'm gonna be trying the slap chop underpainting technique with this mini. <clears throat> so for this, you're gonna need a dry brush of a decent size. Depending on the type of finish you want, you might wanna slightly dampen the bristles first so that the finish is smoother, or if you want a chalkier finish, then just leave them completely dry. First color I'm gonna be going over will be graphite from scale 75, and then I'm gonna go in with a second level, and I'm gonna use NACAR from scale 75 as well. I really liked the look after the two layers, but I wanted to have a lighter high, so I went back in for a final dry brush layer with a white. With this done, I now have a lovely gradient showing the light and dark areas on the mini, which will be a great base for either watered down paints, washes, or contrast slash speed paints. So from this plain plastic, we now have a lovely mini primed and ready for some paint. Slap chop or zenithal priming really shines when you use inks or contrast paints. But when you don't have the right contrast or ink, watering down the paints that you do have also works. Because I have so many of these archers and they're all the same pose, I'm gonna be changing their colors slightly within the units. But for this one, I'm going for a classic Alatoc blue for the robes. I've watered it down so that the priming gradient should still be visible once it's dried, giving us our shadows and highlights. For the leather straps on this gent's quiver and side fanny pack, I'm using Mournfang brown. Again, watered down to retain the gradient. I'm using a lighter brown color here as I imagine the leather used for this would be from some sort of deer native to Althuan. So I'm gonna sidestep what ended up as a mistake here that I correct. So I wanted a yellow gold for the details and I tried the contrast Iyandan yellow, which I honestly have yet to find a good use for. Anyway, I later go back and redo these bits. So instead, let's move on to the skin tone. I normally start with a darker base color, but this elf is gonna have the classic alabaster skin tone. So I'm starting with light skin from scale 75. I want a nice strong color for the bow, so I watered down Pro Acryl Golden Brown from Monument and apply this to the bow. It's a little strong for the gradient to show through, but I'm happy with the color and the finish it gives. And plus the way it's being held up, I can kind of imagine this thing catching a lot of light anyway. I'm really not happy with that Iyandan yellow, so let's fix it. I lose my gradient here, but I'm gonna go back in and cover all the gold bits with Vallejo's golden brown, and it's a great mid-tone for a nice yellow gold color. I know I should be utilizing contrast more with the gradient prime, but I like the simplicity of true metallic sometimes, and with so many of these to paint up, I'm embracing that simplicity for the armor. I'm using classic lead belcher here, slightly watered down, but I'm gonna be going back in with a wash on this, so it's not essential, just more for control. To get the armor just done, I'm gonna be doing that step next. I'm not super organized when it comes to painting and I tend to paint in batches. And sometimes I like the motivation early on to push through a painting project and throwing down a wash when the model's still looking a little rough kind of gives me a morale boost to keep going, as crazy as that sounds. To give the armor the classic mithril style blue tint, I'm using Drakenhof Nightshade to wash it. Again, slightly watered down so I have a little more control. This is probably a little lazy and it'll be something that is different on the different models in the units. But for this mini, I'm gonna be painting the arrow feathers red using Wasdaka red. And I'm also gonna be basing the gems of this mini in the same color.
To separate out the armor and the cloth, I'm gonna paint the armor trim with a matte black. I'm also gonna use the same matte black for the belt. Uh, in my mind, this is gonna be either like a dark cloth or a thick, tougher leather. Plus, it adds a nice stark divide between the armor and the blue cloth. This is probably something that you could skip if you were looking for a quicker paint job, but I watered down some sky blue and I'm gonna paint the hair just to give it a nice striking platinum blonde color. As a final step to get this model what I'd consider tabletop ready, I'm gonna apply Reichlin flesh tone to the skin the gold bangles and the lighter leather color. It'll push the shadows on all these areas as well as tint them slightly with a nice warm tone. So after these steps, here's the progress on the mini. I've avoided washing the clothing because I didn't want to darken the color too much as I plan on bringing in more highlights, but you could easily hit it with the same wash as the armor to enhance the shadows of the clothing. But now, let's see what we can do to make it just that one bit better. Starting with the robes, and I'm going to go in with a lighter blue, Hoeth blue to be specific, but you could simply add some of the sky blue already on your palette to the previous layer to get the highlight color. I'm putting the highlight in with sketchy lines to give it, hopefully, a more fabric look to it, to imply some sort of texture. I'm focusing these sketchy highlights to the raised areas and avoiding the recesses so they keep their original shadow from the gradient prime. I'm flagging a little now, so I need another morale boost. So I'm going for a quick win with highlighting the armor. Using a light silver, in this case, I'm using Stormhost silver, and it's one of my favorite silvers to highlight with. Either on a, a base silver or a spot highlights for a gold, Stormhost silver works really well. I'm just roughly highlighting the scales on the armor here. In some areas, I try to do this more specifically on individual scales. However, in the larger areas, I apply it the same way I would a dry brush, but with slightly more paint on the brush, as I want the armor to be pretty bright. I'm also getting the details on the handle of the bow and his helmet as well. I'm determined to get some use out of a yand in yellow, but honestly, I just really hate this paint. It has this weird greenish tinge to it that I'm never happy with. I don't think this paint works well with a gradient of black and would probably be better used on just a pure white base coat. Anyway, I think this looks bad, but we can fix it. Moving on to the red, and I'm gonna add some highlights to the gems and arrows. Using a lighter red or adding some ivory to the red you previously used, water down the paint and glaze on a mid-tone, dragging the paint up from the middle of the gem towards the top of the gem for a nice, smooth transition. As we painted the arrows the same color whilst you're here, give them a quick highlight as well. In a similar technique to the gems, I want to add some highlights to the yellow gold bangles and the gold surrounding the gem. I mix in some ivory by Vallejo with the golden brown and glaze this on a little thicker than the gem and I glaze it where the areas I think would be lighter. The general rule with non-metallic metals is to have the bright colors right next to the dark colors to trick the eyes. So we'll be coming back in with some shadows later on. So he's looking a little pale, which for this guy is kind of good, but let's make him even paler. Using the appropriately named pale skin, and we're gonna focus these highlights on the fingers and raised areas of the face, such as the cheekbone and nose, and of course the tips of those pointy, pointy ears. This guy is rank and file, so we aren't aiming for amazing. We want easy to paint, but looking schmick on the table. We absolutely won't be painting this guy's eyes.
going for a bit of traditional edge highlighting on the bow, we get this highlight by adding the ivory already on our palette to the Pro Acryl Dark Golden Brown, and nothing special here, we're just running it down the sides to give it some visual interest when viewed on the table. Mixing in some of the ivory with the Morn Fang Brown as well, and I add some scratchy highlights to the leather quiver and straps. I'm really not a fan of that yellow, it looks very artificial. So I'm gonna go back in with some sky blue, it's very pale and it's just gonna leave some of that yellow in the recesses to kind of give it a hint of that platinum blonde hair we had before. I'm also gonna use this to add a spot highlight, a couple of spot highlights to the brown bow whilst it's on the brush. Pushing the gems up another level, and you might have noticed I've also upgraded this guy's braces with gems. Same as last time, this time I'm using Evil Sun Scarlet though, watered down to a glaze and then dragging the brush up from the center towards the top of the gems so the color pools there and leaves us with a nice transition. And it's the same red, so we're also gonna highlight the arrow feathers at the same time. To create the shadows for the gold bangles and quiver details, I've watered down Mornfang Brown and I'm glazing this onto the opposite side of the highlight on the gold, looking to darken the shadows and push the contrast on these parts. So from our first level, we've now moved the quality up in a few areas, adding more highlights and darkening some shadows to give the mini overall just more visual interest. We could base the mini now, but I'm gonna spend a little more time on it and see if we can get them looking a little bit better. A good rule for adding detail is to spend some time on some key areas. Faces and weapons tend to catch the eye, so we're gonna add a final highlight to the skin tone with some ivory, just to push it that one step further. It's a much smaller detail, but we're gonna add two highlight levels to the black trim of the armor. This is going to be more of an edge highlight, and we're first gonna go in with black gray, and then we're gonna do a final highlight level with graphite, making sure to highlight the black belt the model has at the same time. We're also gonna highlight the boots with the same colors. I don't tend to focus much on the feet of the models as I will generally be weathering them slightly with a brown and then the basing materials also cover them. So it feels like an area you can more easily rush. Another focal point of this mini is the belt buckle gem. It's right in the center, so I'm gonna push it a little bit further. Going in with a lighter red, this time Wild Rider red, and I'm gonna use the glazing technique again to give a nice smooth transition between the colors. Also just clipping the edge of the arrow feathers at the same time. To push the contrast on the gold bangles, I'm going to use a watered down black Templar contrast and go over the edges of the Mornfang brown, again glazing the paint towards the area you want to be darker. Using the colors we already have on our palette, I'm gonna mix in some sky blue with the Hoeth blue and do another pass of highlights over the blue cloth. Again, trying to paint these on in little lines to try and give it the look of cloth. With some sky blue on the palette, I'm gonna add a spot highlight to all the gems at the very top. As it's on the brush, I'm gonna do a final, final highlight to the blue cloth as well. And the very last thing for the painting is I'm gonna use some pure ivory to edge highlight all the gold bangles and the details on the quiver as well. 
I'm also gonna make sure I catch the detail on his helmet. And those are the final touches done. I think you can probably agree that the most noticeable upgrade is to the gem. Feels like being so central to the Mini's design, it does kind of draw the eye naturally. But we're not done here, let's weather up and base this badass motherfucker. A really easy and effective way to add some nice subtle dirt to a Mini is to really water down Steel Legion Drab and then coat the bottom half of the Mini with it, dragging the brush down towards the bottom of the Mini so the dirt intensifies towards that area. Then once it's dried, it's time for basing. I use PVA and my favorite base at the moment, which is Arid Earth by Geek Gaming Scenics. This isn't a pay promotion, it's just really good. Then you just add a nice grass tuft and you're done. The goal here isn't award winning. I think it's always good to see how other people paint so you can pick up some new tips along the way. I think looking at this model now, for me, the main areas of focus that stand out are the belt gem, the face and helmet, and probably the bow. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this long. This was me trying to make a decent painting video to see if I could get a good format down. If you're here and you have any tips, let me know in the comments. A big thanks to my Patreons who support the channel and please consider joining for early access to videos and an exclusive Discord server. Anyway, thanks very much and I'll see you in the next video.